The Emergency Data Exchange Language, also known as EDXL, is a suite of internationally available, open and non-proprietary free standards. These standards are designed to enable information exchange through the emergency incident life cycle, from preparedness and response to remediation, demobilization, and after-action analysis for improving preparedness. EDXL makes it possible to share information among emergency response and management service providers. OASIS is a not-for-profit consortium that drives the development, conversion, and adoption of open standards. OASIS work is organized into technical committees. The Emergency Management Technical Committee is dedicated to the development and ongoing maintenance of the entire EDXL suite of standards. You can learn more about OASIS and the work of the Emergency Management Technical Committee on the OASIS website. The EDXL suite of standards are designed to work together and complement each other, each focusing on a specific area of need. Through a practitioner-driven process, the current EDXL standards include the Common Alerting Protocol, Distribution Element, Hospital Availability Exchange, and Resource Messaging. These standards continue to evolve as we receive feedback from the community. EDXL standards currently under development include situation reporting, tracking of emergency patients, and the reference information model, which includes common references. The EDXL suite of standards begin with a practitioner-driven process sponsored by DHS Science and Technology. From that process comes requirements, identified by practitioners to solve a particular problem with data exchanges. Standards working groups identify real-world scenarios to analyze and draft requirements. These requirements are then vetted with the vendor community through the Emergency Interoperability Consortium, or EIC. After review, the EIC submits a draft document to the Emergency Management Technical Committee, where work is undertaken to develop and publish a standard. The OASIS process is open, and comments are accepted from any source during public reviews regardless of membership in the organization. Once complete, these standards are internationally recognized and available at no cost for implementation. The process does not end here. Through ongoing outreach and feedback from implementers, standards can be revised through a formal process to better support the stakeholder community. We'll go through each of the EDXL standards in more detail. CAP, or the Common Alerting Protocol, allows consistent warning messages to be sent out simultaneously over many different systems. This greatly increases warning effectiveness while also simplifying the task of notification. CAP addresses the challenges posed by the diversity of communication channels and independently developed warning systems. It serves as a universal adapter for alert messages, defining one message format with features that are essential for the broad range of alert systems and sensor technologies. Although the term EDXL is not specifically in the title, CAP is a member of the EDXL suite of standards. CAP 1.2 was approved as an OASIS standard in 2010, and updates are currently in progress. It is important to note that CAP 1.1 has international recognition as well. It was published as International Telecommunications Union, or ITUT, Recommendation X-1303. As CAP continues to gain international recognition, profiles have been developed to constrain the standard and meet particular needs. For example, the CAP 1.2 IPAWS profile ensures that CAP data will be compatible with U.S. channels for alert distribution. Similarly, the CAP Canadian profile, which is known as CAP CP, defines a set of rules and managed lists recommended in Canada. This profile also addresses Canada's need for multi-language service. 
The CAP Australian profile meets the needs of Australian state and territory governments to exchange hazard alerting messages between various systems. To learn more about these profiles, you can visit the OASIS website for the Integrated Public Alert and Warning System profile. The Canadian Association for Public Alerting and Notification has additional links to CAP-CP. The Australian Government Attorney General's Department includes links and references for the CAP Australian Profile. The next standard in the EDXL suite is the distribution element, or EDXL-DE. This standard describes a message distribution framework for data sharing among emergency information systems. The DE may be thought of as a container that carries formatted messages such as alerts or resource messages and helps facilitate delivery using routing information. DE is designed to package and deliver OASIS EDXL standards or other data messages. The current release is DE 1.0 Work on a 2.0 version is underway. The next standard we'll discuss is EDXL RM, or Resource Messaging. This standard describes a set of predefined messages for sharing data among information systems that coordinate requests for emergency equipment, supplies, and people. RM specifies a format that allows communication about resources such as requests for obtaining resources, responses to those requests by potential suppliers, and information on the status and location of resources. The current release is EDXL RM 1.0, which was originally published in 2008. The next standard in the EDXL suite is the Hospital Availability Exchange, or EDXL HAV. This standard specifies a format that supports communication of a hospital's status, services, and resources, including bed capacity, emergency department status, and available coverage. HAV allows emergency dispatchers and managers to make logistics decisions on where to route victims. This can be based on accurate data on availability of hospital beds per department, the status of their services, and capacity. Some hospitals use proprietary technology to publish this kind of information. Therefore, access to data may be limited to parties that use the same systems. As an open standard, EDXL HAVE enables easier interface across many different systems. The current release is EDXL HAVE 1.0. Work for a new release is underway. The next standard we'll discuss is EDXL Situation Reporting, or SITREP. The ability to gather critical information in time-critical circumstances is the chief requirement that EDXL SITREP meets. This standard supports reporting on incidents in a consistent format. The end goal is to enable the exchange of clear, well-defined information to facilitate decision-making. The standard includes a set of pre-configured reports. It incorporates the standard Incident Command System, or ICS forms. Work on the first release of SITREP is underway. The next standard we'll discuss is EDXL Tracking of Emergency Patients, or TEP. This standard is designed for exchanging emergency patient and tracking information during the patient encounter, from admission to release. TEP supports patient tracking across the Emergency Medical Service, EMS, and Emergency Medical Care Continuum, as well as hospital evacuations and day-to-day -day patient transfers. It provides real-time information to incident responders, emergency management, coordinating organizations, and care facilities in the chain of care and transport. 
The TEP standard will also enable electronic receipt of emergency patient tracking and care data by hospital systems in TEP format prior to the patient's arrival, which may then be displayed, processed, and shared within their native systems and current standards. Work on the first release of EDXL TEP is underway. And finally, the EDXL Reference Information Model, or RIM. This provides a high-level abstract information model that supports the entire family of EDXL standards. It includes common components as well as governance for usage and change. Within RIM, there are also rules documents for profiles and layers under development. All of the approved EDXL standards that we've talked about today are available through the OASIS website. These can be downloaded at no charge. Simply click on the Standards tab and select OASIS Standards. As you can see, we have the CAP 1.2, 1.1, and 1.0 versions. Under EDXL, you'll see the Distribution Element, Hospital Availability Exchange, and EDXL RM. After selecting one of these links, you'll see there are various formats available, including the HTML, PDF, and documents. There is also a schema available for technical staff to review. Thank you for taking the time today to learn more about the EDXL suite of standards. There's lots of ways to get involved and learn more about these initiatives if you're interested. You can ask software vendors about their use of EDXL to help encourage adoption. Include references to the EDXL standards when preparing RFPs. I'll learn more about the EDXL work and we'll have some references on the next slide as well and share this information with others. Of course, OASIS welcomes your feedback. You can contact the Emergency Management Technical Committee or the Adoption Technical Committee with any questions or ideas. There are a lot of great references and resources available about the EDXL suite of standards. This list provides a sampling of some of the articles, videos, webinars, and groups that are focused on the EDXL suite of standards.